coaching is a, a another, um, I guess, facet of what you do. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Now when I, people ask me what I do, I tell them I'm a speaker and entertainer. And they say, oh, entertainer. I'm, yeah, I'm a ventriloquist. So it's usually sort of almost an add-on. Uh, I used to just say, I'm a ventriloquist. And they go, oh, hmm, okay, that's weird. <laughs> So it's it's kind of strange. Uh, it was always part of my plan to build in speaking as part of this. Uh, Jeff Donham inspired this one, and and I mean this in a positive way from Jeff. Jeff, what, what one of the conventions says, he was talking about his wild success, and and he, he said something about all these things that he's done, and he says, and there's been no socially redeeming value to it whatsoever, which I just find hilarious, you know, because he's bringing joy and laughter and all that kind of stuff. So there is actually something redeeming out of it, but. That struck me. That said, you know what? I, I actually want to do something that leaves people with a little bit more than just a laugh. Uh, I actually would love to inspire people, uh, give people a little bit more content than just having a good time for that hour. Now, there's nothing wrong with just having a good time for that hour. In fact, that ha- that message has become part of the message that I talk about. So, um, so yeah, it was always part of the plan. Okay, and you've uh, you've taken that speaking into now. Now, do you use your characters in all of your speeches, or have you kind of transitioned it so that that is totally separate from the ventriloquism? It totally depends on the situation. Uh, most times, it's a blend. I'm doing heavy content with characters. We're kind of um, flipping back and forth between just having some fun and okay, now here's a message to think about as well. Uh, I just recently had an event that I got to be on polar opposite on both ends of the of the spectrum. Uh, I was the closing keynote speaker for a convention uh, for a trade show, a trade group, and they wanted a 90 minute all business, all content presentation as their closing keynote. And then I was the later that evening. I was the after banquet entertainment. So we were off here and off here, and uh, it was really cool. But I can tell you, as a, a magician ventriloquist, to stand on stage with no props is a completely different way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Now, it's it's had to take you time to build up to that ninety or that ninety minute speech. I'm sure. Oh um, yeah. I mean, uh, it's hard enough to develop material for a ventriloquist act. Uh, I can just imagine, uh, you know, what you put into the time to create something for that speech. It was. Quite involved, yes. Now that in the guiding principle for comedy is how do you get a good five minute set? You start with a ten minute set, right, and cut out all the fluff. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're doing a ninety minute keynote, I really didn't want to start with a thirty, a three hour keynote <laughs> and have to whittle it down. So, although it was uh, probably closer to two hours at the first rendition, then I started cutting, cutting, cutting. Mm-hmm.